Welcome to Sparks of History. We are very honored and pleased to have with us today, Professor Robert Allman from the Center for the Study of Rationality at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Professor Amman received the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences in 2005 for his work on conflict and cooperation through game theory analysis. Uh, thank you again, Professor Amman, for being with us. We appreciate it very much. Okay, I'm glad. Uh, okay. I'm uh, glad to be here. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, just to get started briefly. <laughs> What are the basic principles of game theory? Uh, you know, it's like asking, what are the basic principles of chemistry? <laughs> uh, in other words, there are lots of basic principles, but let me pick out one, okay? One is incentives, okay? Give the other side incentives to do what is good for you, what you want them to do. Give them incentives, okay? Uh, um, yeah, that, that's it. That's the, that's the, uh, the most, I would say, it's the most important principle of game theory. You know? Okay. And, and can game theory be applied to the Israeli-era conflict? And if so, how how can it be applied? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, we, we have to give the other side incentives. We have to give the other side incentives to do uh, what we want them to do. So uh, uh, one thing, one thing is, which is poison, <laughs> they absolutely stay away from it, is one-sided concessions. Okay, one-sided concessions, uh, it just, uh, they give the other side an incentive to double down on the demands on the, uh, yeah, to, to make, to make, uh, uh, it, it, it's, uh, you know, it, you're playing a game, you're not, um, you're not uh, into the love, love, goodwill, into that uh, thing. It, 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 the other side is not is not looking for love from you. Okay, uh, the other side is is takes every concession as a sign of weakness and doubles down on its demands and. Uh, I mean, I, I think the the situation we're now in is a direct uh, a consequence of a one-sided concession, yes, uh, that we made, uh, I guess, 18 years ago, okay, uh, when we... Um, we expelled the Jews from uh, from uh, the Gaza Strip. We expelled the Jews from there. You know, people have been expelling Jews uh, from all kinds of places for uh, millennia. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is the first time that Jews expel Jews. Uh, okay, uh, the Spanish uh, the, uh, uh, expel Jews, and the, the, the British expel Jews, and uh, um, unfortunately, the Germans did not expel Jews; they just killed them. Yes, uh, uh, but uh, so. But it's the first time that Jews expel Jews, and and uh, it was all about uh, helping um, the prime minister to get out of some legal entanglement that he got. Uh, you know, as soon as he said, "Let's expel the Jews from the Gaza Strip," the uh, the legal eagles. In Israel, uh, uh, said hands off, hands off. Okay, let them expel the Jews. So and that is, and it, this was a one-sided concession, and um, uh, and it it has turned out to be terrible, <laughs> terrible. Uh, so uh, it's, it's stay away from that. Yeah. 
the one so so what what would be what, you could perhaps do let me let me add to that please the one thing that you could perhaps do is again it's related to incentives uh, uh it is the incentives of the arabs are to destroy the state of israel okay that's what they want and that's what they teach their children uh, again and again and one of the one of the main uh, items in the oslo agreement was that um, the education uh, would uh, on both sides uh, would strive for uh, for uh, honoring each other and and uh, even uh, uh, respecting each other and uh, okay and and this is perhaps the most important item in the Oslo Agreement okay the most important item and it was totally neglected it was a dead letter from the very beginning it was totally neglected uh, not only was it contravened by the other side but we didn't ins- we didn't ask for it we didn't insist on it yes and that it makes the whole difference because there's the chance for changing the incentives there okay it's what people want all right okay uh, uh it's uh, it, you you want to change what they want okay sometimes in a game you can use incentives to to uh, without changing the people's goals you can use incentives to uh, um to, to to further your objectives like like i said at the moment yes, to avoid what to avoid one-sided concessions because they uh, only give incentives to the other side to uh, insist on more but uh, but in this case i think we should the, the is something we have neglected is to change the uh, change the attitude of the other side i don't think we have uh, we are we are uh, destined to more and more decades and 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 not only decades but centuries 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 of war and conflict it, it's it's awful i have been in this country uh for 50 say for uh, almost 70 years okay almost 70 years 68 years to be precise and we have constantly constantly been fighting yes and this this has to end and the only way it can end is uh by uh, by really buckling down to education for uh peace it's the education it's not the, the how, how do you do that how, how do you do how do you how do you create that incentive through education so that the other side doesn't want to engage in in well form? you have to go into the schools yes you have to uh, you have to uh, go into the schools you have to go into the youth movements you have to uh i i, I don't think there's much hope for you know I I think many Arabs really are also sick of this. Yes, they're sick of it. Like like I'm sick of it. Yes, they may, some of them maybe are even more sick of it. Yes, uh, because they don't lead very good lives. And I think uh, the, this uh, uh, this uh, which is, is very much uh, supported by what they say is their religion. I don't think it uh, the religion. Uh, um, I mean, there may be, you know, many, there are many uh, aspects of a religion which contradict each other. The the religion isn't, not our religion either. It doesn't go to one place, okay? You can take out the, the, uh, you can take from the Gemara, you can, you can, Take a uh, mama chazal, and you you can find uh, find the opposite of it. Also, another mama chazal which contradicts it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so, but they they hate us and they want to destroy us. And and I th- the only hope is to go into the schools and to have a a, a, a 
And I, I don't even think it's all of them. It's probably not all of them. I think many people just want to go on with their lives. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so I think that somehow, <laughs> I don't know how the mechanics of it would be, but you have to go into the schools. You have to go into the youth movements. You have to go into... Uh, into the the uh, what what is sold in in in, uh, in, in public, I, I, you know I don't know if it's feasible or not, but you have to try. Is is, is, is the Abraham Accords is 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 that the direction? Is that going in that direction as part of the Abraham Accords? Is there is education yeah, the part Abraham of that? The Abraham Accords are fine. Yeah, they they're great. The Abraham Accords are great, and and. Uh, but the, you know the the um, the people in Israel, the Palestinian Arabs. Yeah, I don't call them Palestinian because my wife is a Palestinian. <laughs> okay, I'm married to a Palestinian. Uh, she uh, uh, she has Palestinian identity papers. Okay, um, from uh, the from the Mandate period. <laughs> She has a Palestinian uh, identity card. And, okay, so 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 the Arabs, the the I, I don't call the local Arabs. I don't call them Palestinian. I don't call them just Palestinians. They are Palestinian Arabs. They are Palestinian Arabs, and there are Palestinian Jews. My wife happens to be a Palestinian Jew, uh, and uh, and uh, so. So the the Palestinian Arabs did not accept, uh, uh, are not, there should be an Abraham Accord. I don't see why we can't have an Abraham Accord uh, with, uh, with the Palestinian Arabs also. I don't, I don't understand it yet. But uh, I, I think we should try to somehow to, advance understanding and uh, um, if not mutual love but at least that it might come but at least mutual respect mutual understanding mutual and and, and so fear <laughs> fear is not enough of an incentive in, in other words, better better to be feared than to be loved or even respected. <clears throat> no, I I don't think fear is enough. Yeah. Okay. I don't. They, I, mean, I, I I don't think the Arabs have it so good. Yes, they don't have it so good. But they they they. Uh, I think uh, fear may is a two edged sword. It may go in uh, in the other direction also. You, using game, using game. Uh, people stand up to fear. They say, "Let's rebel. Let's uh, let's get rid of these people who are uh, who are uh, oppressing us." Okay. Oppressing us. Using game theory, what what is the the best negotiating approach regarding the current situation of the Israeli hostages, and and what? should be avoided concessions i understand but what's what's the positive approach how would you go about what would you recommend one side of government i i i said one sided concessions have to be avoided correct but two side but uh, you know uh, a concession in the framework of a, of a, a negotiation that's what game theory is all about uh, that's okay one sided concession like the terrible uh, uh withdrawal or uh, from from Gaza the or the expulsion of the Jews not withdrawal the expulsion of the Jews from Gaza that's a one sided concession that has to be avoided but uh, concessions on both sides you know there's no problem with that what i uh, what i object to in the uh, in the current uh, um, hostage situation is uh, that um, we are really shooting ourselves in the foot, if not in the head. <laughs> uh, and this uh, tremendous pressure 
that you see all over for the release of hostages is directed against us. We're directing the pressure against ourselves. Okay. Uh, uh, I was the, you know, I have in, in the street in which I uh, live, the shopping street of Terech Bet Lechem, um, you have all over pictures of the hostages and so on. And, and, and in the stores, you have signs saying, bring them home now. Now, who are they telling to bring them home now? Yes, they're telling it to me. Why well, I should bring them home? Yes, I can't. I would. I would love to bring them home now. Okay. So why are they? Uh, uh, um, why are they exerting pressure on uh, on 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 Israelis? Yes, exert pressure on on Hamas. Exert pressure in abroad. But uh, but why why at home? Yes, yeah? so who are you pressuring? Okay, so the the answer is that they are pressuring the government to give uh, uh, far-reaching concessions. Far-reaching concessions. That's not one-sided. Okay, it's not one-sided. It's uh, uh, you know, it's not a goodwill thing. Yes, in other words, this would be a negotiated. Uh, um, deal whereby the hostages, uh, some of them or most of them, uh, old people, children or something like that, get released in return for something that we give them. Uh, for example, uh, uh, terrorists, okay, people in our jails, okay, uh, so that's not one sided, but we are, we are getting a lot, uh, the uh, campaign but the hostages, and, and it is it it is most uh, um, uh, strong since it, it's most di- directed at the Israeli public. Now, why, if the Israeli public could could release the hostages, they would. So it's it's really a, a pressure on the government to be soft. But that it works against it works against us. Okay, it works against the release of the hostages. Why? Because when the the uh, uh, when Hamas sees these uh, uh, see, sees this pressure, then it expects the uh, Israeli government to capitulate to the pressure from within, and therefore it hardens its position. Okay. And the result is what we see, that since the first exchange, nothing has happened, okay? And nothing is going to happen because it, the it pressure on that we have exerted on ourselves, <laughs> the pressure that we've exerted on ourselves has caused the other side to, uh, uh, to uh, in, uh, harden its demands, increase its demands, and so, and so the 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 this pressure is actually killing the hostages. Okay. But was the first exchange a, a a reasonable balance of incentives according to game theory? Did did it did it no, did, it, did it play you know, well? I, I I can't answer that question because. Uh, uh, reasonable, you know, what's reasonable? Uh, um, I, I, th- I, I've heard conflicting uh, thoughts about this. I've said that the, on the face of it, the the long ceasefire which lasted almost two weeks, I think, somewhat short of two weeks, uh, uh, enabled the Hamas to. Uh, to uh, uh, regroup and and uh, is making the war longer and uh, and has probably directly caused uh, may may have caused uh, uh, many uh, fatalities on our side. On the other hand, other people claim that it also enabled us to to regroup. I don't know. So I don't know on the military side. I do know that the people who were released, um, these are terrorists, and then they probably will go back to uh, 
terrorism, <laughs> okay? They will go back to terrorism, and who knows how many more people will, will, will be killed. You know, the, this whole thing is due mainly to the... Uh, to uh, to the expulsion of the Jews uh, from Gaza and Ophir, it's mainly due to that. But it's also due to uh, Yechiel Sinwa, <laughs> and Yechiel Sinwa was uh, released in a prisoner exchange. You remember there were a thousand twenty seven terrorists released in exchange for Gilad uh, Shalit. Uh, one Israeli soldier, yes, uh, I, I don't know, if he was a private or a, anyway, a non com. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, multiplying that by uh, uh so so it, this had disastrous consequences, by the way, it had disastrous consequences even before. Simchat uh, Torah, it, 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 because the people who were released in the Shalit deal uh, uh, murdered many, many more than one person. Yeah, so if you're talking about numbers, then uh, this was a disaster even before. Now it it turned into a terrible, disastrous consequence on Simchat Torah. Uh, so you have to be, uh, you should be careful with prisoners. But whether this exchange was worthwhile or not, game theory can't tell you that. Uh, game theory, uh, it's it's not a matter of game theory. It's a matter of common sense. Yeah. And, and the final question, there's obviously a, a lot of talk of how important um achdut, unity is in the country. And, and we're seeing it in, in, in different ways since Simchat Torah, since October 7th. How can applying game theory help bring about more unity and maintain unity in Israel? Well, uh, you can't apply game theory to that, yes. Uh, uh, and the reason is that game theory is about people who have uh, certain objectives uh, how to uh, um, how to further their objectives? Yes, uh, how to further their goals? The goals that they have, yeah, uh, when um, interacting with each other. Now, uh, the the only way that unity can be achieved is by people changing the goals, okay. I think in Israel, we have, a, a, within Israel, we have two uh, distinct, uh, we have many points of view, but they they really, they're really, uh, there are really two points of view, two main points of view, which the which the many points of view congregate around. Uh, one point of view is that this is a soil, and uh, and we are here. We are Zionists. Uh, uh, we want the Jewish people to live in a soil. Uh, we consider it a privilege. Uh, we consider it uh, a. a this is what we want. This way we're living here. Yes, and the other point of view is, it's it's the state of the Jewish people. And the other point of view is, well, I I think maybe I shouldn't say what other people think, but it seems to me, okay, That's my fine. impression of the other point of view is, um. Uh, Let's uh, live a, uh, um, what you call the Dolce uh, Vita, okay? Uh, hey, let's try to live as good a life as possible. And, uh, uh, and it's, it's not so much a matter of uh, trying to advance, uh, trying to live in that soil. 
it, it's a, it's nice being a tube. We make kiddush on Friday night and so on. But it's it's not it's not something that burns in our bones. Okay, uh, and uh, I think it's it's difficult to. Uh, it's difficult to change those children. Maybe they can be changed. Anyway, it's not a matter of game theory, okay? It's a matter of education, okay? I think uh, in the previous government, uh, which was not a bad government, you know, it, it, it was Bennett as prime minister, uh, it wasn't bad, it wasn't bad, it was okay. But there was a minister of education there, and she tried to remove uh, the humanities from the high school curriculum. Now, uh, what does that mean? It's a thinly disguised. Uh, it's a thinly disguised uh, ploy uh, because uh, what you're talking about when you talk about humanities is not necessarily Shakespeare, okay? Uh, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a Tanakh. It's the, uh, it's our whole, uh, it's not only the Tanakh, it's our whole, our whole, uh, our, our whole, uh, what should I call it? Our whole background, our whole reason, there's on that, the, the, the re why are we here? What are we doing here? Uh, uh, I, uh, one thing we're doing here is, is Herzl's vision to uh, escape anti-Semitism, but it seems that uh, anti-Semitism has uh, turned into anti-Israelism, and uh, I don't think that doesn't seem to be necessarily a good strategy for that. So people just want to live their lives peacefully here. And they think that by making one-sided concession to the Palestinian Arabs, they're going to be, uh, they're going to get a um, a uh, peaceful life here. But that's not going to work. It's not going to work. The more one-sided concessions you make, the worse it's going to get over here, not the better. In conclusion, after 68 years, of being here in Israel, uh, Professor Alman, are are you optimistic, pessimistic, or somewhere in between? Uh, well, I'd like to say that I'm optimistic, but it's not true. It's not true. I'm I'm pessimistic and. Uh, and I tell my children, I don't envy them. Um, I think uh, the state of Israel will outlast me personally, <laughs> but I don't know how much longer. I'd like to be optimistic. I'd like to, to I'd, I'd like, um, I'd like to return to the spirit of 48. I wasn't here in 48, but I was here in 67. I'd like to return to the spirit of 67. Um, and uh, um, But you know, maybe you shouldn't take me too seriously. I'm, I'm pessimistic by nature. Okay, okay. That's, that's, I'm that's... pessimistic by nature, but you're certainly optimistic. What, I'm, what, I'm, uh, what I think about the future, I have to admit that I am pessimistic. So okay. uh, go ahead and prove me wrong. Okay, okay. I wish you would. Okay. Again, um, thank you so much for, for today. We appreciate it very much. And um, you should go from strength to strength and continue in your work. Thank you. Thank you.